Are you okay, Andrew? All right, hi everyone, good evening. Um, my name is Ian, I'm from the Open Government Products, products team in GovTech, and today I'll be giving an introduction on variable fonts and its applications in web development. So on a typical web page, you have titles, headers, subheadings, and like hyperlinks. And in order to show the difference between them, you use different font styles to show different emphasis. And for every font style that you use, you have to import them, which corresponds to a HTTP request to get this font file. So on Google Fonts, as you can see, the more font styles you import into your, your web page, the slower your load time. Okay, let's look at a typical article on Straits Times, right? How many font styles do you think is important in this simple article here? 10? All right, so the answer is actually 16. Yeah. So what are variable fonts? So you have your static font files, as you can see on the left here, and your variable font file. So a variable font file is actually a collection of all your static font files with the different font variants into a single file. On average, you have, if you have four different font styles, you have around 160 kilobytes of asset size. Whereas if you just import a single font file, it reduces your asset time and load time by up to 50%. So how does this work? A variable font file consists of multiple font masters with the inter interpolation of the values in between. So for example, if a font file, a variable font file will have like thinner, regular, and bolder as its master font, font styles, and values in between will be interpolated on the fly. It also has instructions on how each point of each character will move according to each axis. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with using discrete values like for your font weights like bold, semi-bold, Whereas for real variable fonts, you can actually select any value in between. This will like, greatly in increase the responsiveness of every web page that you do. So aside from your typical font parameters like font weight, uh, font style to make it italicized or oblique, you can actually have custom font access, like making fonts from serif to sans serif or have cool effects like this. So Decova is one of the most popular variable fonts out there. I'm sure most of you have heard of Font Awesome, especially a font, um, a font style consisting of icons or symbols or whatever you call it that you can use in a web page like a font. With Font Awesome, you can actually achieve smoother, more versatile animations with icons, and you can treat them as easily as how you treat a font. You can change the color, you can change the size, you can inline them with your text. How do you use a variable font? So you will import them like a normal font. You have your font face, and whereas the font variation settings is something new, it's something where you set your custom axis to. So this will have like a weight, a width, and the, the font spacing. The browser support currently is just uh, limited to major browsers, so mobile browsers are still largely unsupported. And if you really want to use variable fonts now, and you still want to cater for the mass public, you can use the add supports keyword to check if font variation settings is supported in that browser. If not, it will fall back to your static font file, like so. All right, so I'm just gonna give you a short demo on how you can use variable fonts. Okay, thanks. Okay, so, um, so uh, I'll just hold it, thanks. Uh, so this is go.gov.sg, which is a product for my team. It's basically a URL shortener for government officials to prevent phishing. So um, something that we usually do is that uh, we want a bold text on hover. So you get funny things like this in your nav bar. You have like your buttons popping to the right because your, your font is actually increasing in width. And then you have um, like just static titles in your homepage like this. And when you, if you reduce the font, the window, window width like so, you realize that some of your, of your text will actually fall to the next line and you have this really cluttered look on your mobile view. So let's take a look at what variable fonts can do. Refresh this. Sorry, give me a second. So with variable fonts, you can actually have smoother animations when you bold the text like this. 
And you realize that the font doesn't just, the text just doesn't jump like how you would expect it to be. And if you want to increase the responsiveness of your website, you can, and still maintain the order of the words, you can actually have it squished like so, smoothly. So you have a more optimal mobile view. And okay, so you can actually combine variable fonts with different uh, JavaScript applications, uh, API. So let's take a look at using a light sensor. So if you can see here, in a, in a brightly lit room, you can see that uh, the wallpaper is like in the day view. And if you walk into a dark room like so, it, it automatically goes to the dark theme, right? So this has nothing to do with variable fonts. It's just something cool. <laughs> <laughs> but if you really want to combine variable fonts into this, as you can see, um, this is the original go.gov.sg logo, right? You can actually make the logo more interesting by doing this. So if you move to a much brighter room, you can see the logo glow. So that's one. And next, if you look at the boring icons we have, they're just static icons that does nothing on hover. But with variable icons, you can achieve something like this very easily. And you can even combine it with uh, like the volume of your speaker. So if I say something like this, you can see that the turtle is moving like so. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that, that's about it. <laughs> All right, uh, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, once again, I'm, gonna do, I'm just going to do a quick uh, shameless advertisement for my team. I'm from Open Government Products. Uh, these are some of the things we do. Parking.sg, FormSG, Government Forms, DataGov, Vault, SGID. This will be a new digital identity that will replace your physical NRIC in, in the future. Um, Isomar, just static website generators. And yep, we are hiring. So if you have any queries, head on to open.gov.sg. Thank you.